when the MC was ready today, you were asked to put away your devices, smart devices, like this one. And we all know why. Because in your lives, they are distracting. Today, you're here seated. The lights dimmed. The stage comes to life. And perhaps off in your peripheral vision, you see a blue rectangle. Or you hear that da ding or do 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 <laughs> Someone's message has arrived and you're distracted. Because these devices occupies your mind even when you're here today. We know it occupies our mind. However, we may not notice because it's so small. Yet, there is still damage inflicted. It can be a thief of your time, damage your core relationships, deflate your self-confidence, and beat up your self-esteem. Especially for those who use social media, because you're always comparing yourself to those perfect images. It can even make you feel insignificant in this world. And we can't live without our phones. I have younger twin siblings, a brother and a sister, both seven years old. This morning, when we were eating breakfast, we suddenly hear mom scream. Where did my phone go? <laughs> she was searching frantically for her phone. Lucy, did you see my phone? I I'm eating breakfast, so no, I did not see her phone. <laughs> and I almost laughed out loud when she said, what if I threw it away in the garbage? <laughs> in our house, we have separate garbage cans. But we bring it all out to big, big garbage outside the house. And my mom brought out the garbage after she woke up this morning. And the garbage truck just happened to roar by five minutes ago. What would you do? I decide to call my mom's phone, and I hear, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. It was on the counter right beside her this whole time. <laughs> it can feel like panic when you lose your phone. But what if you had to give up your phone for an entire month? Could you do it? It was two summers ago that my mom decided to enroll me in a month-long boarding camp. And the first thing they do is take away all your electronics. What would you do? I decided to pull out my what ifs. Mom, what if I get lost on a plane right there? What, what if I get homesick? I'm way too young to be going to a month long boarding camp all by myself. And it worked. But only for one year. The next summer rolled around and I totally forgot about the whole summer camp. But my mom just had to bring it back up and tell me, Lucy, there's no way you're getting out of it this time. So I was put on a plane and flown to Massachusetts. Imagine the first day. The ha camp had courses like sustainability and architecture, but we did not care about that. All our electronics are getting taken away. The counselor explains, electronics keep you from making new friends people from around the world from working together. If you're always on your phone, you aren't thinking about creative problem solving, ways to help your team make a project. And then chaos. 40 teenagers explaining how they needed their electronics. <laughs> no phones, no iPads, no computers, no Apple Watches. Nothing with connection to the internet or the outside world. We were fighting to get the shortest of minutes or even seconds on our phones. And then the counselor agreed, score. We would get 45 minutes on our phones each week. The first week, everyone was constantly thinking about their phone. I was stressed, depressed, and guilty because I couldn't reply to anything my friends sent me. And I wasn't the only one. Sitting in the karma room, everyone was saying, I wish we could have our phone. I know, right? This camp would be so much better if we did have our phone. No one was advancing in their games, 
keeping up with their favorite TV shows, and everyone was falling behind on trends. <laughs> a trend can be a way of dressing, a picture, a video, a slang, basically staying popular. I like celebrities in Asia, and in order to keep up with their news and everything, I need YouTube, and I need Instagram. There's an app called Snapchat, where one person can send either a picture or video to someone in their contacts. And in order to get popular, you need likes, followers, and streaks. Times when two users send a picture or video to each other every single day. There are also other social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, and WhatsApp. Then I noticed the counselor was right. A girl named Nina in my volleyball co-curricular was extremely homesick. And every day after volleyball, she would come to my room and cry. I wish we could just have our phones for 10 minutes every day. I could only stare in shock and stay quiet. If Nina did have her phone, perhaps she'll choose to tell me the things that she didn't. Perhaps she'll choose to tell her parents that while Nina was supposed to make new friends by giving up her phone. One week later, kids were frantic. We would get our phones at exactly 8 p.m. And at 7.50 p.m., everyone charged downstairs, signed in, ran back upstairs, lined up, and stared at the second hand on the wall clock. <laughs> tick, tick, ding. It was 8 p.m. and everyone was screaming, we got our phones. We get our phones? We get our phones! And then the proctor that was in charge of handing out the phones would literally get trampled over by 40 crazy teenagers reaching in for their phones and then... <gasps> it was silent. No one was talking anymore and everyone was on their phone. One month later, things were completely different. We got our phones back the night before our flights home, but this time, no one was using it. Instead, we were talking. Except we needed to switch the music we are dancing to. The following morning, when we were saying goodbye, we only used our phones to take pictures. Truly, nothing else. On the plane ride home, I thought, perhaps it's my own opinion, but my friendship with my friends from camp is stronger than my friends from school. I have more to talk about, more to laugh about, and I've told them more personal things compared to my friends from school who I'm known for longer. I realize that people open up about themselves in person, which won't happen if you're always on your phone. Although you might say, yeah, mm-hmm, I'm listening that's probably just half your brain at most. I don't want my mind constantly drifting off about, what am I gonna post next? How many likes will that post get? How many followers do I currently have? Does that still count that I'm popular? I don't want that type of pressure, trying to keep up with everything. If you had this new understanding, if you had this new experience, what would you do? I decided to limit my social media use. I still have many different friends, but I find that we're closer when we're not always on our phones. During lunch, we go somewhere where we can talk instead of sitting around with our phones. And after lunch, we will go to the gym and play volleyball or stay active instead of sitting in a circle using our phones. Because of camp, I've been thinking about phone use. Society can do better. In my opinion, my parents are doing a really great job with my younger siblings. They enforce a screen time curfew and remove electronics from their room while asleep. Research shows that if you remove computers, TVs, phones, and the like from your bedroom, you get more sleep, feeling better rested and healthier. Adults can do better too. Over summer break, one afternoon, my dad entered the room after lunch that we shared. 
I'm so tired, Lucy. I need to take a nap right now. Okay. However, the next moment I looked at him, he was lying on his bed watching a video. <laughs> and it was loud. Instead of having a conversation with me, or getting the rest he obviously needed, he was on his phone wide awake. Did you know the light rays from your phone consist of mostly blue light, like middle of the day sunshine? Harvard research proves that blue light suppresses your sleep hormone melatonin and keeps your brain awake even at times when you need sleep. Now, teenagers. Hardest to give advice to because we're stubborn. Remember 40 teenagers on the first day of camp? Yeah. As a young adult myself, moving into high school, then college, and beyond, I need the ability to make new friends by talking in person with my peers and colleagues. That's why I've decided to activate parental controls on myself. Anyone at any age can activate this. When I first activated parental controls, I would tell myself every time my time was up, it's okay, I'll just start tomorrow. But that tomorrow never came. One week later, I decided that if I wanted to change, I needed to stick with my goal. I finally stopped using social media once my time was up, and I fought the strong urge to turn off parental mode with just the simple click of a button. Remember, you can always decrease time gradually. And if you do run out of time, you'll have more the next day. And if you choose to stay more present, maybe while riding the bus or waiting for coffee, you'll discover that there's actually so much more to talk and laugh about than you might have thought. I'm encouraging you to become more aware of your phone usage. Acknowledge when these devices are causing loneliness, fatigue, stress, and harming your ability to make new friends. If you do, you'll discover less stress and more free time. Although, at times, like my mom, you can still panic. Wait, where did my phone go? What if I threw it away in the garbage?